There's a lot of people in college football that have no idea what to do with the Razorback football team this upcoming 2022 season. We're going to explain why, as well as Jalen Williams getting an official invite to the NBA Combine and why I really hate this day every single year. This is the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. <laughs> Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as uh, we are to enter into the middle of the week. My dog is staring at me for some reason. I don't know why. He's distra- just he's always distracting me. Just something that kills me anyways. Good to see you, Rowdy. Uh, but anyways, I uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. And uh, it's been a, uh, it's been, you know, again, slower time of the year where there's not a whole lot of things going on. And, you know, we're going to start, you know, kind of transitioning into a different type of style when it comes to the uh, Locked on Razorbacks podcast and everything go along with it. Uh, but you know, when I'm, when I'm thinking of topics, it's usually a lot of times I have a lot of people I text that's within media of other schools or of uh, national college football writers, SEC writers, or whatever it may be. And there'll just kind of be some fun discussions that we have and, you know, maybe questions that they're asking of why it's this, why it's that, whatever it may be. And I can't tell you how many times that I have talked to people that say that they don't really know what to make of Razorback football this upcoming year. Now, when normally when you would hear something like that, you could take it as almost an as an insult where people are going to say, "Well, I don't know what to do with you because you could be absolutely terrible or you could be pretty good. We don't know what, you know, what's your quarterback situation. We don't know what your defense is going to look like." You know, it could be chalked up to just basically saying that the reason we don't know what to do with you is because you we could see you go either way, where you could be really good or you could be really bad, but we don't really know where you're going to be at, so we're just going to kind of find a little place to fit you in, which publicly they'll never say this, especially when it comes to they're putting up their rankings and everything when it comes to the uh, uh, order of finish at SEC Media Days or whatever it may be. They're never going to go down that route. But the one thing that I will say that has really fascinated me in having these conversations with people is that when they say that they don't know what to do with Arkansas, what my interpretation of that is, is that Arkansas has every reason to be a really good team, a great team, if you will, this upcoming season, but it almost seems like they can't commit to it. They don't want to commit to the idea of Arkansas being really good in football this year because it doesn't compute with them. It's like, yeah, they got a great quarterback in KJ Jefferson and arguably one of the best quarterbacks, not only in the SEC and in the country. And yeah, they return a a lot of key starters and the majority of their offensive line and their great running back group that they have. And they return a lot of key pieces to the defense, like a, like an All-American caliber safety and, and Jalen Catalan and Bumper Poole, who's all SEC caliber. And they added a lot of high-quality transfers, guys that were starting at other SEC schools, uh, both on defense with one from my, uh, from Alabama, Drew Sanders and Brini from Georgia at the cornerback position. Both guys started on teams that played in the national championship game. Like they they have all the things, and you know we don't we don't talk about it enough. But they, they even got an elite kicker in Cam Little. They have all the things. They were able to keep their coordinators, keep their coaching staff intact for the majority uh, of the of the off season and everything. So all of these things. If it was any other team, this was Bama that had this, or Georgia that had this, or te- you know, Texas that had this, or USC that had this, or Ohio State that had this, or whoever LSU had this. If they had a very very similar setup to what Arkansas is having as far as what they have returning, what they have coming in, and what they're doing and the way they're moving forward, almost everybody unanimously would say that, okay, well, this team's going to be really good. Yeah, they lost a couple of players, but they were able to add in some really good ones too. And because of the coaching staff and the great job that they do and keeping the coordinators, I mean, that's a key thing. And and there's no reason why this team can't finish in the top 10 once the season comes to an end. 
Like people would say that and have a lot of confidence in saying that if it was some other team that they were used to seeing having a high level of success. But because it's Arkansas and because they don't really know what to expect in year three of Sam Pittman because of how bad things were with the Razorbacks and really this mindset of a ceiling, a cap that Arkansas has as a football program, they look at all the ingredients. They look at all of the makings of what makes a great football team and the formula that it takes, and they see that Arkansas has that formula. They have that formula. They have it, boom, right there, everything into the mix. But the one thing that they see, though, is at the top of the page when it sees the formula, it says Arkansas. Doesn't say Alabama, doesn't say LSU, doesn't say Georgia. It says Arkansas. And that makes people really uneasy to say, yeah, that's going to work. Because it is just Arkansas after all. Again, you could take this as an insult. And some of you who are listening to this may take that as an insult if you're a Razorback fan. But see, I'm not taking it as an insult. I'm taking it as something that if you just take your fandom out of it, like take it out of it, and you look at it from a very objective perspective, you really start to see is saying like, I get it. I get why people would be not really knowing what to do with Razorback football this year. I understand why people would say, yeah, but I mean, how good is this going to be? Because again, it's Arkansas. And as good as things are going, it, are they really capable of competing with the big boys? Are they really capable of going into the SEC West and winning it? Are they capable of that? It seems like they have the makings for it. But at the end of the day, teams like Arkansas just don't win the SEC West. Teams like Arkansas don't finish in the top 10. That's reserved for other teams and other elite programs. But the fact of the matter is, is that Arkansas is 100% capable of being that team this year. And when you're looking at all of the reasons why you may believe that, and which I do, like I fully do, and I fully believe that Arkansas can be, I'm not saying they will be, but can be a team that finishes top 10 this year and has a phenomenal year. I mean, if you just look at the schedule, you know, Arkansas's toughest games are all at home in Fayetteville, mind you. I mean, you can beat Cincinnati game one. You can beat South Carolina game two. Missouri State game three, you can win that one. A&M, they're going to be tough, but that's down in Arlington. For some reason, A&M doesn't play their best in Arlington. Beat them last year. Could you beat them again this year? We all know about Bama coming into town October 1st, but you get them at home, so maybe. At Mississippi State, you can win that one. At BYU, for sure, in your bye week. At Auburn, yeah, you should win that one. Liberty, of course you can win that one. LSU at home, absolutely. Ole Miss at home, for sure. Missouri on the road, for sure. Now, I just went through that list, and you're probably saying, are you saying we're going 12-0? and No. Nah. I'm not saying you're going 12-0. and but if you're a Razorback fan and you look at all those games and you look at what you have as a team and you look at the makings and the culture that Sam Pittman has built, are you afraid of anyone? Are you afraid of any team that's on this schedule? SEC or non-conference, does anyone scare you? Because to me, besides the juggernaut Bama, there's no one on that schedule that I look at and I say, ooh, that's a for sure loss. There's no one on that schedule that I feel like when we go into that game, it's going to feel like this uneasy feeling of, oh boy, I don't like our chances in this one. We're going to have to play our A game if we want to get out of there alive. No. There's not a single game on the schedule that gives me that feeling. And until you beat Bama, I'm going to pick Arkansas to lose against Bama because you've not beaten them since 2006. It's the Bush administration. It's been a long time. But there's not a single team that scares me on this schedule. And there's not a single reason to believe that Arkansas would lose to many teams on this schedule, given what you have going on in your program right now, given all the recipe that you have and all the ingredients that you have to be a great program. You're not scared of it. 
But those people out there that don't know what to do with you, that don't know where to pick you, they are scared. They are scared because they're scared of being wrong. They're scared of being on the wrong side of history, if you will. And sure, there'll be some people out there, some crazy people that may go all in on Arkansas and believe that they can take it to that next level and take it to that next step and say, oh, yeah, this is going to be my dark horse pick to win the SEC West. There'll always be people like that. Always. But at the end of the day, when people don't know what to do with you, it's because they are scared of what you're capable of. They're scared to even admit that someone like you, like you, Razorback football, someone like you would even have a snowball's chance in hell of making it to that next level, of being able to win the SEC West. It scares them because there is a order. There is an order to the way things are in college football. You have your teams that are supposed to be there. You have your teams that are supposed to do their things, that are supposed to win, that are supposed to compete for SEC championships and national championships. There's an order to it all. But as they say in the movies, upset the established order, insert a little anarchy, and everything becomes chaos. And college football has proven many times that chaos can sometimes favor the teams that are out of order. And I think Arkansas is a perfectly fitting team to be able to do that. I think their schedule sets up for it. I think that their season sets up for it. I think that their roster sets up for it. And most importantly, I think their coaching staff with Sam Pittman at the helm sets up for it. People universally love Sam Pittman. It's hard not to love the guy. People universally respect him and his coaching staff. And universally, I'd say people probably respect K.J. Jefferson and a lot of players on this team. But universally, they don't respect Arkansas. So that's why you go out and you prove yourself. Prove yourself to be that team that's going to upset the order of college football. The people that don't know what to do with you, give them a reason to believe that the formula that you have in place is one that's legitimate and not one that's some sort of facade. Make them believe this year in 2022. I think the Razorbacks are going to turn some heads and really showcase that last year was not just a fluke. It was just the beginning of greatness within the Razorback football program. <clears throat> Summer's coming. Actually, it's kind of here, depending on where you live and <clears throat> excuse me, depending on where the weather's at and everything. But I got to tell you about Bill Bars and the, the best perfect snack that you can have when it comes to pretty much any time, anywhere. It's convenient. They taste great. You can get them on to go, on the go, and with that summer around, you know, you're going to have snacks. You're going to be packing stuff for the beach. You're going to be packing stuff for the kids to go to their day camps and whatever they do. Like, you want something that's healthy but tastes good so that way the kids aren't yelling at you because you gave them some crappy protein bar. But that's what Built Bar will be able to help you out with because not only do they taste great, they come with all different types of delicious flavors. They're convenient. And by listening to this podcast, you are going to be set up for a great deal. If you go to Built.com, Use promo code LOCKED15. You're going to get 15% off your next order. It's as simple as that. Just use promo code LOCKED15 at Built.com for 15% off. You can buy the whole store. It doesn't matter how many you buy. Buy a lot of them because they got a lot of them available. And, you know, you don't never want to run out of stock or anything like that. So, again, Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your next order. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so I uh, wanted to give a shout out because um, we wanted to talk a little bit of basketball, and this was kind of some news that came out where, and this is according to hawksports.com, Curtis Wilkerson, Arkansas sophomore Jalen Williams has received an invite to the 2022 NBA Combine scheduled to be held in Chicago from May 16th through the 22nd, marking the fifth consecutive year of Razorback has received an invitation to the event of course, the news was first reported by Adam Zagora. So that's pretty impressive if you think about it. Fifth straight year, fifth, five straight years, Razorback basketball players have been invited to the combine. Uh, glad to know that they're going to keep that streak up. And I have a feeling they'll probably keep that up for next year, too. So uh, the combine is a marquee showcase event in the spring where roughly 60 of the top draft eligible prospects convene under one roof to showcase their skills in front of scouts and other office personnel from all NBA, 30 NBA franchises. 
Williams is eligible to participate in the combine as well as many individual team interviews, workouts without jeopardizing his collegiate eligibility, which is extremely important. Earning the invite to the combine was an expected happening for Williams, who is listed as the number 45 overall draft prospect for the ESPN. Williams has until June 1st to decide whether or not to remain in the draft or return to Fayetteville for his junior season. The NBA draft will be taking place at June 23rd, in the Barclays Center in New York. Now, here's where it gets tricky, and here's where it's going to be really interesting to see how it all goes down. Arkansas's roster is currently full at the 13 scholarship maximum for the upcoming basketball season. In the return, for Williams would require some maneuvering, but there's no doubt that Musselman would make necessary room to welcome back a player who's been a cornerstone of the Razorback success for the past two seasons, 100%. So, and we know all about his stats and everything like that, but either way, him uh, getting that invite is not surprising. It's it's actually, you know, something that most people thought was going to happen. But, I, you know, the scholarship thing is a fascinating deal because a lot of people have been seeing these names of guys that are still in the portal, like, uh, you know, Amani Bates or whoever that says, okay, they have interest in Arkansas. And then Arkansas fans are like, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hold on. We already got too many players. You know, we got we to gotta, we gotta figure this out. Well, as Nolan Richardson always says, the numbers will always work themselves out. So you don't, don't have to worry about that. But you got to keep this in mind, too. Because right now, you've got uh, 13 scholarship women, right? Well, Arkansas only has 11 scholarship players on the roster currently. Stay with me. Because Jalen Williams and the Twins from Rhode Island who are transferring in, they still technically have their name in the NBA draft. So you're talking about 14 if all three of those guys decide to come to Arkansas. But you won over. So you kind of have to figure out, all right, so what do we do here? So I think that's one of the main reasons why Musselman is really still keeping feelers out there in case Jalen Williams decides to leave or if one of these twins or both these twins decide to leave just to make sure. But I would also not be surprised if maybe somebody currently on the roster was told, you know, maybe we need to go a different direction. Maybe you need to try your hand at some other place. Maybe you need to go on, move on to somewhere else just to see uh, if you can have a little bit more success there as well. I think that there's probably an element to that. I think that there's uh, a reason to believe that Arkansas has, for whatever reason, Arkansas has had, uh, you know, guys that move on either will, you know, willingly or basically told to. So I don't think that that would be a surprise if it came that way. But if Jalen Williams come, wants to come back, you bring him back 100%, 100%. And if he does come back, then they're arguably the best team in the country next year, for sure. So that's going to be the interesting question of if he comes back. But at the same time, if he's if he's grading out as a second round draft pick, he's going to go. He's going to go. I think so, at least. Because to me, it's like you got two rounds in the NBA draft. 60 picks. That's it. It's not like the NFL where there's a ton of draft picks or, you know, all that. Two rounds. 60 picks. So if I'm Jalen Williams and I'm getting drafted and I'm draft eligible and, and I'm being told, hey, we're going to take you in the second round even then, peace, I'm out. Same thing would happen with Isaiah Joe a few years ago. Like, he just say, he said he was coming back, which everyone was excited for, and then he put his name back in, and everyone's like, oh, man, what, what the crap? What's going on? Well, he got drafted, and that showed that he made the right decision, and now he's on the 76ers and you know trying to develop his game and everything like that, but you know he showed his ability there. And I think it's going to be the same thing with Jalen Williams, where if he grades out as a second round draft pick, people are going to be like, we're going to draft you and he's going to move on from Arkansas, which is fine. Again, that's, that's you can't hold anything against him for doing that. It's just, you know, the way of the game. And so I hope he comes back. I think if he does come back, Arkansas will for sure be a national championship favorite or at least one of the favorites to win it all. Um, but if he doesn't, I trust Musselman to be able to bring in guys and to have guys ready that are able to step up and make some, uh, make some big moves and become a huge pivotal part of the team this upcoming season. But uh, we know that with Williams getting invited to the Combine, it's a great, that's great news for him. It's not surprising. And we have until June 1st to really know and figure out whether or not he is taking his talents to the professionals or will he be returning to Fayetteville for one more year. Either way, even if he leaves, thank you, Jalen Williams. Like, he, he was... Like you, you will always be remembered as being one of the pivotal parts in the turnaround of Razorback basketball and restor restoring them to glory. Like he will always be remembered for that. So no matter what his decision ends up being, 
We wish you nothing but the best of luck, Jalen. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the car parts you will ever need. So why endure often pointless and seemingly intimidating questioning about what well, your cars and vehicles and all that stuff? Just save time and money when you use Rock Auto. It, I mean, listen, you're going to be probably paying 30, 50, 100% more when you go to the same part or get the same parts from the local stores and everything. Skip all that. Rock Auto is a family-owned business and been, been serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. And they have prices that are reliably low for every customer. And they have everything you would ever need. So go and explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution for your auto part needs. So if you go to rockauto.com right now, you can see all the parts available for your car or truck. Just write locked on in the how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you will ever need at rockauto.com. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the uh, Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Now, this isn't sports related. It's not Razorback related. But, you know, since we're getting into the slower times, I'm, I'm bringing up stuff that I think a lot of people are talking about. And today is uh, May 4th. And it's amazing that we're already here in the month of May. And I even tweeted this out and people had problems with it. But today, since it is May 4th, people come out and say, May the 4th be with you. And it's a Star Wars holiday. And on Star Wars holidays, like Disney and you know Star Wars, they put out a bunch of content, like movie trailers or show trailers, which the Obi-Wan series looks pretty good. Um, and, and it's just one of these things that everyone's tweeting about and talking about and all that. Let me say this. I actually love Star Wars. I do. I, I love the original trilogy. I grew up with the prequel trilogy, which wasn't great, but it still resonated, still helped me. You know, it's still, I still enjoyed it for what it was. And then the sequel trilogy was absolute hot garbage uh, from Disney. Uh, I enjoyed The Mandalorian. I, I played video games for Star Wars when I was a kid. Like, I've always loved Star Wars. And I still love Star Wars, even though Disney's tried to ruin it at every turn. I still love Star Wars. But I hate this day, I hate this holiday. Because it just is like everyone just comes out of the woodwork and saying, may the fourth be with you and, and all that. And then on the other side of the coin, it's like you have these people be like, I have never seen Star Wars. And I'm I, yeah, I'm part of that club because I'm awesome. I, I, I haven't ever, ever seen Star Wars. So you guys are a bunch of nerds. Uh, Star Wars sucks. Star Trek's better or, or some crap like this. And I'm like, <clears throat> OK, so essentially what this day turns into. Is. Star Wars nerds against non-Star Wars nerds. And both of them are equally as big of nerds because the Star Wars nerds, of course, are obsessed with Star Wars. And the non-Star Wars nerds feel like they it's necessary to come out and say that they're not Star Wars fans. Sweet. Great. What are we doing here? Like, there are people that I know, and people that I'm friends with, that like every time, every time this day comes around, they tweet out about, may the fourth be with you. Internet, Star Wars. And then they got the people that are on the other side of it they're just, you know, shaking their head. I don't agree with any of this. I've never seen the movies, nor will I ever see it because I am a man. Whatever. <laughs> like, I just hate this day. I hate this day because of all those reasons, too. And then, like, everyone's, like, doing Star Wars content. Like, I know on our radio shows, on The Buzz, they're going to be talking about, hey, well, you know, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? And someone's going to be like, none of them. Threw them in the trash. Not letting my kid grow up to be a pansy watching Star Wars. I hate it. I hate this day, as you can tell. But anyways, uh, hopefully it ends very soon and we can just move on to either liking or not liking Star Wars and be normal human beings for a change. How about that? Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We're going to keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.